we love you today. Father, look on us. Look on us, God. Look on us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon our hearts, our minds, our souls, our thoughts. In the name of Jesus. We love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. Love you, Lord. Father, forgive us of all sins, blot out our transgressions, create in us a clean heart, and you a right spirit within you, us. Teach us to love you more, trust you more, rely and depend on you more. In the name of Jesus. Oh, excellent God, we trust you. We trust you even now. We trust you now, we trust you now, Father. We trust you now, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we trust you for our life, our health, and our strength. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, glorious Father, we thank you. Excellent God, we thank you. Marvelous Savior, we thank you. Yes, Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Father, have your way. Father, have your way in our life. 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 Have your way in our life, God. Have your way in our life. Have your way in our life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we love you. Father, we bless you now. Father, we glorify you now. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, excellent God, we love you. Excellent God, we bless you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, excellent Father. Oh, excellent Father. Your will be done. Your glory be revealed. Your mystery be made known. In the name of Jesus. 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 Jesus, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name. In your name. In your name. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Jesus, give us strength. 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 In the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. 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 Have mercy upon us, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you now. Father, we thank you now. Father, we give praise to you now. We give glory and honor to you now. Salvation and strength, power and might, wisdom and honor. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father. Have your way, excellent God. 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 Have your way, excellent Savior. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, excellent Savior. Have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, have your way, have your way. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you. 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 Oh, Father, I thank you
Father, I pray. Oh, Father, I pray. Oh, Father, I pray. 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 Oh, God, 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 I pray. Thanks to the God, I bless you. Thanks to the God, I bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, excellent God. Have mercy, excellent God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We glorify you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, there's none like you nowhere. You are God, and beside you, there is no other. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, look on us. Turn our hearts around. Turn our lives around. In the mighty name of Jesus. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around, Father. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around. Turn our lives around, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give praise to you. We give glory to you. Honor to you. Salvation and strength. Power and might. Wisdom and honor is yours. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, glorious Father. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, marvelous Savior. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless it to all of you, the Lord's people. We thank God for you. We thank God for the thing that the Lord is doing, amen, and how he's blessed each one of you, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We love you, Lord. We give praise to you, Father for your matchless love. We give you praise, Father, for seeing about us from day to day. We give you praise, Father, for not giving up on us. We give you praise, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 for your hand is stretched out. 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 Oh, your hand is stretched out. Your hand is stretched out. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Father. We bless you even right now. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. Yes, glorious Father. There's none like you nowhere. In all of the world, you are God. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for seeing about us today. Father, stretch forth your hands and bless what we are doing. Bless this work that we are called your work to go forward. In the name of Jesus, Father, and we've come to this platform, we've come to this altar today. We may share your word with this, your people. Give us what to say and how to say it. Order our steps, order the word that comes out of our mouth. Give us what to say, Father. Give us what to say. Direct your words to heal. Direct your words to bless. Direct, direct your words to lift. Direct your words to build. Direct your words to inspire. Father, direct your word, God, to snatch men out of the fire, out of the flame, out of the muck, out of sin, shackles, God, in the name of Jesus. Direct your word, Father, to bring men under subjection to the thing that thou art doing. Oh, Father, direct your words that men will repent everywhere and say that thou, God, you are the Christ. You're the Christ I serve. You're the Christ I'm looking for. You're the Christ I need in my life. Father, direct your words today in the name of Jesus. Oh, lead us and guide us in the way you have us go. We give praise to you now. We give glory to you now in the name of the Lord. 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 Mm, Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, excellent God. 
Thank you, marvelous Savior. 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 Oh, Father, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, even to the thing that doesn't look good right now, it doesn't look good to the eye, but oh God, we give it to you. We share it with you. We give it to you. We give our, oh God, inadequacies to you. We give you our frets, our fears. We give you our neglect. We give you our hangups. We give you our frailties, our weaknesses. We give them to you. We give our burdens to you. Our heavy load, we give them to you. We cast them at your feet in the name of Jesus. Now it's in your hands, Father. We trust you to give us a favorable end in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glorious Father, thank you so very much, every one of you who are on the line with us. Thank you for being with us. Amen. We love you in the name of the Lord. We thank God for this time. I thank God for this time. I thank God for this time. I thank God for this time. I'm always looking, amen, to, to fellowship with you. I look forward to this day. I drop things that I'm doing. I'll just stop, bring it to an end so that I can be here and fellowship with you today through the word of God. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Deborah. God bless you. Good seeing you. Woman of God, Jennifer Harris. God blessings to you. Amen. All of you, the Lord's people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lifeline, blessings to you. Facebook Live, blessings to you. Uh -huh. YouTubers, blessings to you. Amen. We are happy to be here today. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Amen. On yesterday, we finished up our lesson. If it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there would be no perseverance. We finished with that lesson. <clears throat> and today, we want to uh, start with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This is lesson number 21. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, this chapter have 33 verses, but today we're only going to look at 11 of them, and we want to finish these 11, and hopefully on tomorrow we'll go another further, all right? But today we're going to, excuse me, focus our attention on verses 1 through 11. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 11. There must be a better way, and we must live it better than all the rest. There must be a better way and we must live it better than all the rest. There must be a better way. Uh-huh. There must be a better way and we must live it better than all the rest. Why am I entitling this uh, in this way? Well, I, I want to say that I want to say that I'm looking at lesson, uh, yesterday's lesson. If it had not been for a divine encounter with Jesus, there would be no perseverance. We come today, and I'm and I'm talking to the Lord, and I'm and I'm asking the Lord to give me help. Give me help. I I need help. And uh, then it takes me down. To, it takes me back to my encounter. My very first encounter with Jesus, not my first encounter with somebody telling me about Jesus, but now this is my very first encounter with him. And um, at my very first encounter with him, before I encountered the Lord, I was in a, I was between, I was betwixt a hard place. I, I, I don't know where I was. I don't know if I was coming or going. I don't know what I was doing. All I know is that the sentiments of the clause A of that word, that there must be a better way. Yeah, was in my heart, in my mind. And then I'm staring out of out at the Monterey Peninsula. Monterey Peninsula there in California. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm looking at the Monterey Bay, 
feeling some kind of way, vexed in my spirit, things not going right, things are just topsy-turvy, and then there, there must be a better way. There, there, there's got to be a better way. There must be a better way. There must be a better way than this. There must be a better way than the way that I'm going. There must be a better way. And there, while I'm pondering, there must be a better way. Out of the clearness of the sky, out of the clearness of the night, yeah, out of the clearness of the night, the silence of the night, the silence of the heavy dark, of the night is clear and the darkness is heavy. The darkness is penetrating. The clearest of voice without stammering, without stuttering knows my lingo. Know me by name. James, there is a better way. It startled me. I'm looking around. There is a better way. I'm almost scared. I'm frightened because this is this, this voice is clear. It's not cracking. It's not breaking. There's a better way. I'm trying to figure out where this voice come from. I'm in the bathroom. There's nobody in this bathroom. It's a military latrine, about 13 stalls, and I'm standing in there looking out over the bay and the window. There's got to be a better way. There must be a better way. Yes, James, there's another way. Who said that? Jesus is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except they come by me. I'm hearing this for the very first time. And then I'm not going to go into my, I'm not going to go into the encounter. All of the, all, this was even, this here, even this portion is an encounter. And then he began to tell me to go get my Bible where I've hidden it. I've hid it from myself. I've hid it from others. I didn't want anybody to see me with it. I'm ashamed. But he said, go get it. I went and got it. And then he said, sit down and read. How do I read this? He said, start from the beginning. And then I'll just leave that there. And perhaps I'll disclose more of my testimony at another time. But I just wanted to come to this clause, clause number one of my title, There Must Be a Better Way. It brings back memory to me of my very first encounter. There must be a better way. And clause B, and we must live it better than all the rest. I, I almost said we must do it better than all the rest. And no, don't put, we must do it better than all the rest, but we must live it better than all the rest. Why? This is a life that has been given to us. And the Lord has given to this people eternal life. This was something that the Lord has not mentioned to those before the flood. He has not mentioned this to those who were after the flood. He did not mention to them that I'm going to give you eternal life. He mentioned to them that I'm going to lead you to a land flowing with milk and honey. You're going to be my people. And I'm going to take you to a place, to a land flowing with milk and honey, that you might be my people. And we thank God for that. But since that time, Jesus comes on the scene, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except they come by me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever that whosoever, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. This is the very first time that we were told about an everlasting life. Others before the flood lived the seas almost, almost, almost a thousand years, but they died. Methuselah, 969 years, but he died. Everyone who've lived since the creation of man died, all because God cannot lie. They died 
because of sin, but they died because a law was given. A law was given to mankind before the law that was given to Moses. God gave a law to man before he gave a law to Moses. And the law was, do not eat of this fruit, for in the day thou eat of it, you will surely die. You may not like the term rascal. You may not. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know the severity, but you may not like the term rascal. But the devil is a rascal. Anything that would come behind God and say, did God say this? Did he really say that? Well, we... God does know that in the day you eat of this fruit, you will not surely die. God bless you to you, Golden Family. I trust that Mother Williams, you're watching. I love you. And I thank God for you. You have my heart. You have my heart. And I love you. And you shall live and not die. You shall live a long time. You shall be strengthened. You shall be healed. You shall be delivered. For God shall perform a miracle in you in the name of Jesus. For God shall perform a miracle in you. 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 A miracle locate you even right now, Mother Williams. A miracle from God shall locate you even right now. In the Mekaba Tedote, Ikaba in the matchless name of Jesus, a miracle shall locate you in Jesus' mighty name. There must be a better way, and we must live it better than all the rest. I believe the Lord has given us a marvelous lesson tonight. Amen. And we're just going to feast off this word. We're going to chew on the nuggets of it. And get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready to let's go another further. Father, lead us. Lead us in truth. Lead us through divine truth, divine revelational knowledge. Cause truth to be unveiled. Cause truth to be revealed. This knowledge is not any knowledge. But this knowledge, revealed knowledge. Father, give us revealed knowledge today. Give us revealed knowledge. Speak to us, Holy Father. Speak to us. You said we need not worry about what men to teach us. You said that the Holy Ghost would teach us in that hour. He will bring all things to our remembrance whatsoever you have said. Give us insight to this. Give us revealed knowledge to this word. In Jesus' mighty name. There must be a better way and we must live it better than all the rest. Life is in Christ. And if you have Christ, you have life. If you have accepted Christ as your savior, you have life. But not just life, but the Lord has come that you might have everlasting life. Recorded in John Gospel chapter 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. This life is in Jesus. Didn't tell Abraham. Didn't tell Moses. Didn't tell uh, uh, Noah didn't tell none of the others this. Why? Because God wanted this eternal life to be an Adam. God created this man to live eternally. But God gave him a law. And in that law, we have to follow the laws, the mandates. We have to follow the guidelines. We have to follow whatever the Lord says. The Lord says, don't eat. Don't eat. The day you eat of it, you will surely die. You will surely die. 
And it takes a rascal to go behind the, the, the uh, God's back, to go behind God, and to try to make it seem as if God's a liar, to 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 to, to sow subliminal seeds, to sow, to sow questionable words, to sow questionable thoughts in your head, in your mind, as if God lied. That's a lower than a devil. It's a rascal. Yeah. And I don't know what rascal means, but it's the devil. It's lower than that. Yeah. 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 You're going to go behind God? Did God really say that? God does know that the day you eat this, you wouldn't surely die. Now all of a sudden you want to make rules? You want to make laws? You want to set, you want to establish laws in place? No, no, devil. Mm -mm. No, uh-uh. You're going to go behind God's, I, I, I can't even say God's back. You just want to go behind God's word and say something different. We're not having this. We're really not having this. There must be a better way and we must live it better than all the rest. Who's all the rest? Who's all the rest? Did you know you are the closer? <laughs> Father, help us to understand this. Did you not know that we, the people of this dispensation, the people of this generation, the people of this lifetime, did you not know we are the closers? This is the final curtain call. And the final curtain call has to do with us. This is the final curtain call, whether you believe it or not. This is the final curtain call. There will be no other curtain call. This is that final curtain call. The day you hear my voice, hard night your heart. This is that final curtain call. This is it. This is the curtain call. This is the time that we hear and we move by this. That we are not to be as the children of Israel in the wilderness. We're to do it better. We're to do it different. We're to do it better than all the rest. Why? Because God have established this time for us. Have you noticed Nathan and Abiyam and the rest of them did not live in this dispensation? But this is the dispensations for the Jennifer Harris's, for the Deborah Coopers, for the Shirley Kennedy's, by the Stephen Hanks. Yeah. Yeah. For the Lula Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, these are the days. These are the days. These are the days for the prophet Ezekiel. These are the days for the James Williams. These are the days. It is up to us to leave a mark. It is up to us to do it different. It is up to us to do it better than all the rest. Why do you keep saying better than all the rest? Hang in there just a little while longer. You're going to see why we're saying better than all the rest. Follow us as we go through the word of God. You're going to understand what it means to live it better than all the rest. I'm not talking better in the secular to, to glorify your flesh, to lust after your flesh, to lust after the things of men and the, you know, all the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. No. To live it better than all the rest because we are that sold out crew that would give our all to Christ. We've got to do that. We are the closers. We are the final curtain call. We are the final one that will stand on the stage. We are the last of the last. There is no other. We will give the benediction. Our Savior, rather, will give the benediction. 
yes, we are the final ones. Moses could not stand on the stage and give a benediction. As, as, as awesome as Elijah and Elisha were, they could not stand on the stage and give the benediction. None other can give the benediction but Christ himself. He is risen as he said, and he shall, he shall so return as he went up. He's going to come back. And ready or not, sooner or later, he's about to crack the sky. We are the final ones. We are the final ones. And everything that the children of Israel did in the wilderness was for our learning. Matter of fact, let's get to that. There must be a better way and we must live it better than all the rest. This is lesson number 21. Study text, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. We expect your life to change for better forever. You must expect the same. We do have one subtopic. How, why are you going to have a subtopic? Just use the topic. That's all right. We're going to get a subtopic out of the topic. Everything the children of Israel went through in the wilderness was for our learning. Everything that the children of Israel, Israel, everything the children of Israel went through in the wilderness was for our learning. This is what makes this lesson so unique. This is what makes this lesson so different. This is what makes this lesson stand out above all the rest. This is that lesson. This is that lesson that speaks to us. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. I'm going to do everything that I can to unfold this and unravel this so that you will not be ignorant. Moreover, brother, I would not. Please do not be ignorant. Do not be unlearned. Please let it come to your forefront. Let it resonate in your spirit, man. Please walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It is your spirit that connects to the divine. We're not, we're not appealing to your soulless man. We're not appealing to your movement, uh, your attitudes, your feelings, your emotions. We're not appealing to that. We come direct and raw to your spirit. Your, your, your spirit can handle knowledge. So therefore, moreover, brethren, I would not have you, I would not that you should be ignorant. Don't be unlearned in this. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. You done threw a curveball. Yes, we did. All of our fathers was under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All was under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Notice how God is handling and dealing with this. All passed under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were all baptized into Moses. And we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. We're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You just cannot get away from Christ. You cannot unravel yourself from Christ. You cannot peel yourself away from Christ. Because you've heard that song. Have anybody heard that song? The song that says he's been there all of the time. Waiting patiently. In life. He's been there all of the time. Listen, listen, listen. He's been there all of the time. Father, speak to us through your word. He's been there all of the time. He did not just start being there for you when you start knowing him as Jesus. 
He did not just start being there for you when he hung on a cross and gave up the ghost. He did not just start being there for you when he was risen from the grave. You've always been there. Under the cloud and pass through the sea. I'm, I'm not even, I want I want to go deep. I, I do. I do. I, I I thought about this thing. I, I I was recycling this word. Yeah, while I'm riding in the car, I was recycling this word while I was getting dressed to handle some business today. I was recycling this word, just letting it play. Just just you know you know put on the talking Bible and just letting it play and. And put it on repeat. Let it start all over again. Chapter all over again. Just start the tenth chapter all over again. And just inundating my mind with the word of God. Just saturating my thoughts with the word of God. And I really want to take it deep. But that's not why I'm here. I'm supposed to deal with the basics. And that's what I'm going to do. Deal with the basics. I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the flood, under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat. Wow. Oh my God. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. All the time, all the while, the Lord has been there for us. All the while, he been there through the cloud, he been there through the sea, and he been there through the meat. He fed us, he baptized us, he clothed us, he led us. The Bible said that he led them through a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The Lord led them that when they had no food, he provided them manna from heaven. And the book of uh, 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 Psalms, Psalms, I think 78, 78, 75, 78, somewhere in there, it says, and God gave them angels food to the full. God fed them angels' food. Manna. Manna is called, and manna, when you hear the term manna, manna simply means what is it? They didn't know what they were eating. And it's in Psalms that the revelation of knowledge said that they were eating angels' food. They didn't realize that they were eating angels' food. When they wanted meat, the Lord provided them quails. The Lord just sent quails their way. Don't try to figure it out because we're talking about God now. Don't try to figure out where you get so many birds. Why you allow so many birds come to that location? For 40 years, birds kept coming to that location. You say, but they couldn't hatch fast enough. When you're talking about God, God creates birds. God just sends birds there, right there, right there, right there. Go down and see about them. I have some hungry people. Feed them. And here's the, here's the catcher. Here's the catcher. The catcher is, this is not some ordinary cloud. And this is not some ordinary sea. And this is not some ordinary meat. How do you know? And we're, and we're all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. Everything here, everything here that we're talking about today have more spiritual connotation than they have natural connotation. Why is that? Because what the children of Israel did then in their time, in their day, was more natural. But for our learning, because we are the one that this example was made for us, that example of Israel passing through the sea, going through the cloud, being baptized in the Red Sea. That's right. All of that was for our learning. All of that was for our building up. All of that was for us. Why? Because we are the closers. 
All of that was for the closing act. Everything they went through, everything they did, we are to learn from their failures. We are to learn from their good. We are to learn from the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that takes us back. And we must live it better than all the rest. We must live it better than all the rest. There must be a better way. And we must live it better than all the rest. Why? Because the Lord has certainly been there and he went through dispensations of people. He went through dispensations of people so that we would get it right. You thought it was all about David. You thought it was all about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You thought it was all about the rest of them. You thought it was all about those other fellows. Baby, it was all, all about the closing act. It was all about the closers. It was all about us. It was all about what's happening now. And God allowed all that to happen because he's bringing it to a head. He's bringing it to fruition. And this one must set the stamp of approval on. You may not understood it from uh, uh, during the time of Adam, to Noah. You may not have understood it from the time of Noah to Abraham. You may not have understood it from Abraham to the judges. You may not have understood it from the judges to the prophets and from the prophets to Jesus. You may not have understood it then. You may not. We, we, we probably didn't get it. We didn't know everybody didn't get it during the time of Jesus. And there's a whole group of people, the people that he loved, they fell out with him. You remember the part where Jesus said, will ye also go away? When he began to talk to them about some stuff. And they said this was a hard saying. He was talking about eating of his flesh until you except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And they stopped following him. Who? His people? What people? The Jewish people? They couldn't deal with that. But was it really all about them? <laughs> uh, was it really all about them? Let me share something with you. It wasn't really all about them. And let me share something else with you. Holy Ghost, help me. Please help me, Holy Spirit of God, help me. And it wasn't really all about the children of Israel. Father, did I say that? Yes, I said that. Help me, Holy Ghost. It wasn't really all about the children of Israel. Why is that? Because God wanted all men to come to know him. God wanted everybody to come to know him. He cared for Cain, even though Cain did what he did. And God even set a, a mark on Cain so that the people would not kill Cain. Cain wasn't right, but God didn't want people killing him. An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. No, God had wanted to have mercy on him. Just like God wanted to have mercy on all men. But all men on the earth was not his people. All men on the earth was not his. So he had to come back to a, 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 a parable and talk about the wheat and the tear. He had to come back uh, uh, with the parable talk about the sower of the seed. He had to come back, Jesus had to come back with a parable and while you were thinking it was just those persons who just did not accept him as savior. It goes bigger than that. Because the true authentic people in the earth when they hear the gospel I did say true, authentic people, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. They were here, and they know how to turn. But those persons who are here illegitimately, those who are here illegitimately, and there are many that are here illegitimately, they won't run that fast to Christ because they didn't come the right way you thought otherwise 
they were a decoy, a decoy for you. They were an irritant for you. They were problematic for you. They were a deception to you. <laughs> you forget. You forget there's a devil loose. And there's a devil that can transform himself as an angel of light. You forget there are some demons on the loose. And they too can transform themselves as angels of light, as people of light. They can transform themselves to make it look like, ah, forget what people have told you. Better, better recognize truth. Recognize truth. Recognize revealed truth. There are some things, there are some people that's here that is unauthorized, that illegitimate. Spiritually illegitimate. But those persons who came by the right way, God have always cared for them. There are some that want to block the plan of God, stop the plan of God. And when you read the word of God, it looked like he had his people to kill them. Just, just wipe them off. Why? Wipe them off for what, God? The Lord knows those that are his. They were never his. They were to avoid, to make void the plan of God. They were to, uh, they were to weed out and to make void and non-effective uh, non the plan of God. Wipe them out. Get rid of them. They don't belong. No, 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 no. That's going to mess up my plan. It's not about what the devil wants. It's what it's about. It's about what God wants. And you thought it was all about the children of Israel. No, it was about all creation that God had created. What you fail to realize is that God wanted the children of Israel to be the priest of God. And that they would be the one who would serve as priest, as the seraphims operate in the heavens and serve as the priest. They handle uh, uh -huh, the, the golden censer. They handle uh -huh, the, the censers and the vows. They handle the prayers. They handle the, the seraphims. I don't even know how many thousand. I, I can't. I'm not even gonna. Talk. I don't even know how many of them there are. But there, there, there are so many of them. The seraphims and God wanted his children, the children of Israel, to, 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 to carry out the mission. The same thing that the seraphims carry out in the heaven, God wanted his children to do that on the earth realm. His children, the children of Israel. But they were to do it to who? To reconcile the world to him. It wasn't always just about the children of Israel. Baby, the plan of God was bigger than that. The plan of God has always been bigger than that. We just didn't teach it. We didn't teach what we didn't know. How can you teach what you don't know? And you can't teach until God gives you revealed truth. When he revealed truth to you, that he's not a one-sided God. He's not a one-sided father. And he wants to reconcile the world to him. And he wants all of us to play that part. And this lesson revealed that to us. That tells us that all of this thing that you're seeing was for our example, for our learning. We were to serve, his children were to serve as the priest of God. That the world would bring their sacrifice. The world would bring their, yeah, their sacrifices. And we would offer them up to God. We were to intercede on their behalf. As Aaron was as Aaron and Moses intercede for the people, we were to intercede on the people's behalf. To reconcile them to God. And the interceding that we're doing now is only a portion of what we're supposed to do. Oh, when you're in living color. Oh, when you're to do it the right way. Oh God, just remove the veil from our eyes. Just remove the cover from our life, Father. Just remove the veil. Remove the veil, Father. Cause us to walk in this truth and embrace it. <laughs> 
were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. This is not just your regular meat, the spiritual meat. And all and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that what? What did they drink? Why are you calling it spiritual drink? Because they drank of that spiritual rock. Huh? Whoa, wait a minute. What do you mean they drank of the spiritual rock? <laughs> Paul, you're saying some heavy stuff, brother. Brother, pa this is not just coming for me. So y'all may look at me cross-eyed or slant-eyed or some kind of way, close your eyes and one eye open and one eye closed. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, this, these are not my words. These are Brother Paul's words. These are the ones that seen Christ through revelational inspiration. I want to call it revelational inspiration. Something Paul didn't, um, not, something that Peter didn't even speak about. Peter, James, and John, Bartholomew, Philip, Thomas, they couldn't speak on this. It takes somebody who did not walk with Jesus that the Lord will allow him to see it from a different perspective. And you can see it from a different perspective. God wants us all to see it from a different perspective. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. God gave us spiritual drink. We are about that life. What life? That spiritual life. That's the life that we are about. We are about that life. We are about that spiritual life. We are about that life that we drink from a rock. This is not hip hop. No, no, no. You, you, we're not copying nothing from hip hop. We're not copying nothing from the world. The world is copying what their slogans, their jargons, their, they, 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 they are, they, they, they're copying whatever they're saying from here, from us. This is the life that we're about. We're about this life. And did all drink the same spiritual drink from that. And they drank of that spiritual rock. What rock? That rock that followed them. What? You, you know that's going to make you flip your strip. What kind of rock going to follow you? What kind of rock anointed hands are going to follow you? What kind of rock is going to follow you, Pastor Deborah Cooper? There's a rock following you. I wanted to title this, Look Behind You, There's a Rock Following You. <laughs> but you may not have gotten my drift. Look behind you, there's a rock following you. And did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And then Paul exposed what he was talking about. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. You know the rock of ages. Cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. You know the rock. The cornerstone. You know the rock. You know the same rock that Moses smite when he was supposed to speak to it. That same rock followed them. That was not some a uh, 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 fragile. You know, it wasn't a rock that just a uh, 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 stayed put. No, the rock followed them. That was a rocking. That was a walking rock. <laughs> a moving rock. I'm just adding a little bit of, oh God, please help me, Father. Please help me. Oh God, I've got to finish my lesson. And did all drink that same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. In other words, you couldn't get rid of him. You couldn't get rid of him then and you're not getting rid of him now. That's the same rock that you know what? If you're not careful, don't let it fall on you and break you. Don't let it fall on you and crush you. But you can fall on that rock and be healed. You can just fall yourself prostrate 
on that rock and be delivered. But don't let that rock crush you. That rock was Christ. But with many of them, check this out. But with many of them, with many of them that was in the wilderness, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. God was not well pleased. Everybody wasn't obedient. Everybody didn't follow God away. There was some of them that was sowing seeds of discord. A lot of them was bringing in children of disobedience. A lot of them was incubating liars. A lot of them was incubating uh -huh, abort. Yeah, you, you're not, y'all think people today were the only one that was aborting babies. No, they probably didn't do it the way you, they're doing it today. But there was some that was aborting babies then. They was, they, was, they was doing some stuff that God did not approve of. And the Bible said, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. God didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. But guess what? He's God. And you're the one. This is for your example. Why? Because everything points to you. You're not Israel. You're not the children of Israel, but everything points to you. Why? Because you have the final act now. The curtain call is on you. You are the closer. This dispensation, this generation is the closer. And all of this was for our learning. The children of Israel did not embrace this grace, a grace that they were supposed to embrace and become priests of God to reconcile the world to God. Not that God is discarding the world, but he wanted, he wanted a certain people to reconcile the world to him. So when they didn't get their act together, what do you think you're doing now? Why do you think uh, 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 this plan of salvation has been given to you? Because this plan of salvation is given to you so that now you can serve as kings and priests. You can serve as priests to reconcile the world to God. Okay, so the children of Israel didn't want to do it. Get me the Gentiles. Go to the hedges and highways and compel them to come. Bring them to my feast. Bring them here, hither. Bring them hither. Whosoever will, whosoever will, whosoever will, let them come. That's not just a parable. That's life. That's you. That's me. Whosoever will, let them come. You came. So what's your purpose now that you come? To serve as a reconciler. To serve as a closer. To serve as the one who put the final touch on it. Because after you, the only one that's going to stand after you is the one who's going to crack the sky. There's nothing else coming after you. You are the one who have the final say now. Hear me, people. You are the one who have the final say. And everything that the children of Israel did in the, in the wilderness was for your learning. Oh, don't take my word for it. Let's go another further. My time is up, but let's go another further because I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that you just, you just want to think I'm off my rocker. You just want to think that I'm unlearned, that I'm trying to, I'm trying to throw some other gospel because you have not heard this. I'm trying to bring some other teaching, some other learning that you have not heard. No, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. If I preach any other gospel other than the gospel that we have. You carried this gospel. You had it in your bosom all the while. You just didn't read it. But it's always been there. That same spiritual rock that followed them has always been there. Nobody inserted that in your Bible. It's always been there. That rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, these things, now these things were our example. See, I told you, these things were our example. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. They were, the, they were to set the stage. They were to set the stage 
They were the opening act. They were to set the stage. They were the opening act. Let me say that again. They were to set the stage. They were the opening act. Baby, we are the closing ones. We are the closers. We have the final say. This is it. There's none coming after us but Christ himself. He's the ones coming to gather his. Now these things were for, excuse me, now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And then it said, neither be ye idolat um, Id idolaters as were some of them. As it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink, rose up to play. They made idols. They were idol worshipers. When Moses was up in the presence of God, when the man of God was away, the people rose up to play. And while they're playing, they built the golden calf. You remember the story. We're not going to go there today. My time is up. But they built the golden calf. They danced around the calf. And they said, this is the God that we're going to say. We don't know what happened to Moses. We don't know what happened to them. We're going to serve this one. They're dancing out of the clothes. They're dancing. They're frolicking around. They're doing all types of evil. All of the ungodly filth that was in their flesh began to come out. Things they lusted after. Things they indulged in. Things they've seen. They're in Egypt. Now they want to do it. The man of God is gone. He's in the mountain with God. And this, this demon, these devils, inspires them to conjure something that they saw in Egypt. Now these were now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication. You know fornication. You know that fornication that, that's uh, having sex outside of marriage. But it's not just limited to that. No. Having sex outside of marriage is not just limited to that. But it also embraces orgies. Also embraces uh, 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 sensualities. This, uh, 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 deep sensual feelings. Masturbation comes out of that. Uh-huh. Perversion comes out of that. So when you hear the term fornication, fornication is not a standalone entity. But there are so many other things that comes along with fornication. And if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> if you didn't know then, now you know. It's, not, it's never been a standalone entity. This has anything to do, fornication has everything to do or anything to do with person indulging into sexual acts outside of marriage. Adultery has everything to do with those persons who are married, you're married, and then you're dealing with sexual acts while you're married. But you're not doing that to each other, but you're doing it to somebody else's person, somebody else's partner. Yeah, somebody else's wife, somebody else's husband, but you're married. Your wife is at home. Your husband is at home. But you're engaging with somebody else. And every deviant, ungodly, filthy act that can take place, transpire when you're married falls under adultery. If you're not married, you're not married, and you're having sex it falls up under fornication. And everything else that goes up under that falls up under fornication. If you are married, if you are married, and you find yourself masturbating, then that masturbation falls up under that adultery. 
They are masturbators of fornication and they are masturbators of adultery. That spirit just want to just go everywhere. That's the spirit that like spiders. It just want to go everywhere. It just have tingles, tingly tingles. Just look, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just want to, it want to be double-sided. It doesn't care that you're married. It doesn't care that you're uh, single. It doesn't care. And he tells us here, neither let us commit fornication. Fornication is not that standalone entity. It's not a walk alone spirit. It's a spirit that cohabitate with other spirits. It's a spirit that runs in a deep pack. Because out of this spirit also come, a, and, and, and this, this spirit here runs with a lot of other spirits too. It's called the spirit of filth. Anything unclean, anything ungodly, anything unholy, anything that is not of God, yeah, filth want in. Filth that do not have a party and I'm not in it. And for those persons, doesn't matter the title, indulge into fornication, they cannot raise up with clean hands but their hand become filthy. And that's why you wash those hands. And that's okay. You don't have to wash them. God's going to break them. God's going to... Uh, uh, hear me. You don't have to wash those hands because you may not be at that place to see. When Jesus said, he that has ear to hear, let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He letting us know that there are some of us who are saved. Some of us who are following Christ who have ears, but they still can't hear. He know this. And just as there's some who have ears to hear and cannot hear, there's some who have eyes to see and they cannot see. Some have eyes to see, cannot see. So there's some who cannot see what I'm saying, cannot hear what I'm saying. That spirit of filth, that spirit of filth will indulge into fornication, rise up at night or day, rise up at a certain Sunday or whatever, and want to lay hands on you. But God's about to break that hand. God's about to break the hand that lay hands on you. God about to break the hand that that is laid upon your shoulder, that is laid upon your head. God's about to break the hand. God's about to break the filthy hand that rests upon you. When you start seeing yourself as holy, when you begin to see yourself as holy, when you begin to see yourself as holy, as that righteous daughter, as that righteous man of God, when you begin to see yourself as such, the enemy is going to raise up his filthy hands to lay his hands on you and it's going to rot off. Think you're not strange when you see the hand wither away. When he raised the hand to lay it on you and it withers up. Like it just broke and just went the opposite way. Twisted, mangled, right in front of you. Think it not strange. Don't become fearful. Don't start running and yelling and screaming. Know that I'm a righteous man. I'm a righteous woman of God. And no filth is going to lay their hands on me. When you start seeing yourself as such, you're going to see these things happen. When you start seeing yourself as such, you're going to start seeing that thing happen right before your very eyes. You don't have to take my word for it. Just start seeing yourself as the righteous woman, righteous man of God that you're supposed to be. And the first time it may startle you, but you don't need to be startled. When you know who you are, when you know in the God that you trust, when you know you sweat, tears, fasted, prayed that God would touch you, live in you, moving you, 
and you have a, a vexation against sin. And God pulled the cover off that thing. And they get ready to come here, daughter, come here, son. Let me, and then their hands raise up. And as it raises up, it becomes rotten. While I'm on that note, who was that king? Who was that king? Who was that king? Who was that king? And spoke a word and somebody reached out to touch the prophet. I think it was the king that reached out to touch the prophet and his hand became rotten. His hand became with it. And the man, instantly, 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 the man, see, I told you, I got to put word on it. I can't just say this thing just for myself. I, I, I cannot, God forbid, I just speak these words of my own self. But there's got to be word on it. And as soon as he went to touch the man of God, the prophet of God, his hand began to wither and he began to cry, oh, oh, man of God, man of God. He cried out to the preacher, to the prophet. that he would recover him of his hand. Touch not God's anointed and do his prophets no harm. And that, that, and that evil one, that, that, that God about to pull some cover. God about to pull some cover from those fornicating preachers and fornicating men and women. I said preachers, it could be, it could be anybody. God about to pull the cover off of them because they want to live a deceptive life and they want to lay hands on you and proper lie. So while they're getting ready to pull their hands on you and, and touch you and proper lie, you've been seeing yourself as a holy man of God, a holy woman of God. And that other one comes because they're trying to stop and prevent the work of the Lord. They're trying to prevent you from doing what you're doing and they're laying their filthy hands on you and they reach out to do it, their hand withers right before them. Think it not strange when you see these things happen. Somebody just gonna say, Father, help us. <laughs> oh, Father, help us. I can't even take that. You, you know, there, there's some stuff you say you want to take back. No, you don't take certain things back. No, you, you don't. You don't. Father, thank you. Help us. Help us, Lord. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. Twenty-three thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ. 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 As some of them were also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. If this is not God doing something for the closers, if this is not God doing something unusual for the closers, and who are the closers? You are the closers. And because you are the closers, the final curtain call is you. You're the ones, the final curtain called is upon your life. And God's about to do some things. Eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has it entered the heart of men, the, the awesome things, the marvelous things, the awe-inspiring things, the things that God is going to do for those that love him and walk upright before him. God's going to make people know that you love him if you love him if you love him if you love him you truly love him God's going to make some examples God's going to use you for an example as he used the children of Israel for an example for us now these things were our example they were an example for us the opening act was a, a, an example for the closing act I don't even want to use the term act the opening people was a, 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 an example for the closing people. 
Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them were also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by destroyers. Let me say that again. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by destroyers. You didn't know there were some destroyers among you. They're right there. There are some destroyers among us right now. You don't see them. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they look like, but they're there. Just like when the enemy who operates undercover lift their filthy hands to touch you and that God's going to break the hand, the hand's going to wither right in front of you. You'll hear it. Some of it's going to be on the news. Some of it you're going to see. And people are going to wonder what just happened. And you're going to know. These are the words that I've heard that preacher talk about. These are the words that uh -huh, I heard that man. Well, who is he? Who is it? How do I get back to? I heard that. I just heard that the other day. I just heard that. Oh, my God. I was following this one site and, and, and the preacher just said that. Oh, oh, my God. And it happened right here in my midst. Neither murmur ye. Some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. Notice verse 11. I'm going to quit. Now all these things happen unto them for example and they are written for our admonition to encourage us to strengthen us to behoove us to, 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 to appeal to us to get it together. Now all these things were all these things happen unto them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. So you thought I was making that up, right? You thought I was making that up. I told you, we have the final curtain call. I told you, we're the final act. We're the final ones. Upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now all these things happen unto them for an example and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. There's nobody coming after you. You are the final one. What are you going to do with your words? Make them matter. Make it count. Represent Christ. Represent him. My lesson is over. I've got to stop. But there must be a better way. And we must live it better than all the rest. They've come before you and they've did their thing. And the Bible says, but as many, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. They went before you. And many of them, God was not well pleased. Many of us, God is not well pleased. Many of us today, God is not well pleased. And he's given us a chance. He's given us time to get it right. We are the closers. And the closers got to do it better. The closers have the punchline. The closers got to bring it all in. The closers got to see things that the other didn't see. The closers have to see the whole picture. The, 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 the opening ones don't always see the whole picture. But now the closers have to see the whole picture from the beginning to the end because you are the ending ones. Father, help us tonight. Open up our understanding. Continue to allow revelational knowledge, revelational insight, revelational inspiration to address us, the issues of your word. That we have pondered, we have ran away from it, we didn't see it, we didn't know. But, but Father, help us tonight. 
help us tonight. Forgive us of sin, blot out our transgressions, create in us a clean heart, renew a right spirit within us, teach us your way. Don't let us discard this truth. And whatever need to happen to make us believers, whatever need to happen to make us wiser, whatever need to happen to make us do it better than all the rest, Father, let it happen. We got to live this better than the rest. We've got to live it right. We read too many places in the scripture that too many who've come before us have failed in so many different ways. Help us to get it right. Help us to get it right. None else is going to come behind us and clean this up. We are the cleanup. We are the cleaner uppers. We are the one to clean up, clean it up. Because when you come, you are striking the cloud. The Bible says that when you come, shall you find faith on the earth. We are to motivate, we are to inspire, we are to encourage everyone to keep faith alive, keep hope alive. Don't throw away your confidence. For you're going to come looking for faith. Father, help us to get it right. Help us to speak it right. Help us to live it right. So that everyone would be able to see that what you are saying is true. That devil came behind your words and said, did God say that? God does know that the day you eat is true fruit. You wouldn't surely die, but you'll be as God's knowing different between evil and good. And so many have bought into that lie. But today, Father, today we submit to you. We give you our life. We surrender to you. That you'll lead us and guide us in the way that you have us to go. Save us from our sin. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our from, from culture. Save us from old tradition. Save us from save us from ignorance. Save us, Father, and deliver us. In Jesus' name I pray. If you do not know the Lord as your Savior. Repent of your sins. Ask him to help you, to come into your life. Repent of your ways. Repent of your dealings and your doings. And just ask him, Lord, come into my life. Heal me, save me, deliver me. I love you with all of my heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. And he will gladly save you. God bless you, God keep you heaven smile upon you. I've got to go. I trust that you have a blessed day. And the Lord is willing, we'll be back on tomorrow. We'll be back here, amen, on tomorrow with part two, uh, picking up from verse number 12, and we're going to go another further. Amen. Love you. Have a blessed day, everyone.